Hi everyone, uh, and welcome to the Calix webinar series. Uh, my name is Michael Wheatland. I'm one of the business development managers here at, uh, at Calix. Um, I spend my time uh, working with councils, uh, helping out, and, and water authorities, uh, helping them out with the management of uh, municipal wastewater systems, uh, the networks, and uh, treatment plants um, to, to improve efficiency and reduce costs. Uh, I wanted to yeah, welcome you to the, to the new webinar format. Um, today I wanted to have a chat with you about uh, a, uh, a complete uh, low-cost solution for, for odour control within uh, municipal wastewater systems, so sewer networks, pump stations, um, and that, that system is designed to, uh, to eliminate odour at the, at the source of the problem um, instead, of, uh, instead of treating the symptoms. Uh, so we've designed this, this webinar series to uh, both provide uh, you with some opportunity to, to increase your knowledge and professional development during this time uh, when you're stuck at home, um, but also as a, as a resource so that people can find out about uh, whether it's uh, odour control or phosphate control. Um, I'll, I'll have a bit, of, a bit more of a chat about this later on, but uh, uh, yeah, we're planning a, a quite an extensive uh, series of webinars. We've got some uh, very exciting guests lined up. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to you about those at the end. Right now, um, I'd like to take, I'd like for you to take the uh, a moment just to make sure that you're logged into YouTube. If you, if you want to uh, interact with the chat, um, it is going to be important that you you create an account or log into uh, into YouTube, uh, and then you can you can post comments on the side, uh, and uh, I'll be able to respond to them at the end. Um, if you've got any questions as we're running through the webinar or the, the presentation, please don't hesitate to, uh, to type your question in the chat. Um, at the end, I will, uh, I'll be reading through those chats and hopefully be able to respond to you. But uh, if, if it gets a bit overwhelming, um, I'll be able to answer a few questions uh, and we might uh, follow, follow this video up with uh, either directly responding to you uh, via email with answers to the questions or we might even produce a... Uh, uh, a video here to to answer those questions if there's if there's just way too many but uh, please don't hesitate to uh, to post in the in the comments on the side if uh, if you don't feel comfortable with that though um, send us an email um, yeah our, our email details are on our website um, and I can get I can get back to you uh, if it's maybe set too sensitive to have a chat about it in uh, in this kind of public forum. Uh, please don't don't hesitate to get in touch, and we can have a have a chat about uh, about those systems. I uh, just want to make sure we've got some people online now. So, <clears throat> so yeah, it looks like we've got a, a few people online. Um, don't forget as well. So if you if you're joining a bit late, you can actually rewind the video and and start watching it uh, uh, from the start. So hopefully you don't miss anything uh, during the uh, during the webinar. So, uh, look, let's, uh, let's jump in. Um, okay, so um, what we're talking about today is a, uh, a complete solution for, uh, to eliminate uh, odour, odours within uh, sewer networks and uh, to be able to deal with uh, the complaints uh, that come about because of that. So, we've... Uh, Got a new situation on our hands here with the uh, uh, with the thing that's going around. Um, everyone seems to be working from home, and that's that's going to create new challenges. Uh, we, you know, there's people who think of, of working at home. You know, this is the new normal. Sitting on the couch, getting a little bit of work done, it all looks really relaxing. You can have a coffee, wake up in the morning, and you know, it's it seems all that. It seems like a really good situation, but the reality of the situation is a little bit different. Um, working from home is uh, is a stressful situation, you know. Dealing with with uh, with crazy kids, um, trying to balance that, you know, noise going on in the background, and you and you're stuck at home all the time. So there's going to be a lot of people in that situation moving forward, and uh, and one of those one of the things the the consequences of that is that like staying at home during the day, there's going to be a lot more flow during through the uh, the wastewater networks, which means you know, potentially more more gas coming out, more people in their backyards. So they're they're observing um, the the odor that's coming out of the network. There's more people now that the gyms are shut. More people walking around parks and around the, their their block to get a bit of exercise. Um, 
that means people are going to be noticing that odour a lot more. So it's, it's going to become increasingly important to be able to uh, uh, deal with those, those odours at the source of the problem. Um, and as you can imagine, there's going to be uh, there's going to be increasing number of complaints uh, due to uh, odour within the uh, wastewater network, unfortunately. So hopefully uh, this webinar today will provide you a little, with a little bit of information so that um, so, so that we can tackle that together uh, and uh, and solve the problem. Uh, the 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 total solution we're looking at is uh, is Actimag. So we'll just click over here so that you can actually see the presentation a little bit better. So, um, what is Actimag? Actimag is a, uh, a magnesium hydroxide uh, based product. It's got a really high surface area, so it brings in uh, the, uh, the the normal benefits you see with a magnesium hydroxide, but also uh, you get additional benefits, which I'll have a chat about uh, later in terms of cost reduction and uh, and other benefits in, in terms of like phosphate control or boosting biogas. So, what is what is this complete solution for for odor elimination? Um, it, it's around uh, around dosing units. Uh, so we've got these uh, these dosing units. We can drop into any location, whether it's inside a pump station or outside. Um, Calix does analysis of hydrogen sulfide gas throughout the net, throughout your sewer network. Um, that way we're able to tailor a solution for your specific needs. Um, we do full service delivery, so that includes um, turning up with the, uh, with the tanker and putting the product into the, uh, into the chemical system, into the chemical dosing system. Um, but it also means service and maintenance, uh, so you don't need to worry about uh, uh, you know, broken pumps or you know, block pipes, that type of stuff. Um, uh, we do regular maintenance on every delivery, um, which means that, that you don't need to worry about that. It's all built into the service contract. Um, if you want to take that up, alternatively, you don't need to. We can just buy the product. Um, but also ongoing odour monitoring. So we also offer systems that are able to, uh, able to monitor the odour um, on an ongoing basis live within your network and do optimization of the systems in order to, to uh, uh, solve that. But also... Um, also to give you confidence that we're, we're actually solving the odour problem. <laughs> um, additional benefits that the, uh, the high surface area ActiMag provides uh, is around pH and alkalinity in the downstream treatment plant. Uh, also around phosphate removal. So if, uh, if you've got a system that is sensitive, a wastewater discharge system that is sensitive to, uh, to, to high phosphate levels, whether it's being discharged into a, uh, a, a river or, or it might be onto, uh, onto land, uh, there's, there's uh, the ActiMag provides a solution to be able to uh, reduce the phosphate uh, that, that's coming through the, the effluent of the treatment plant. So, as well as the odor control upstream, you get the uh, the downstream benefits at the treatment plant. Uh, if the treatment plant has uh, a, a biogas system on it as well, um, so whether it's so an anaerobic digester with a either a heat exchanger or uh, electricity generator. Uh, this, this product allows you to boost the amount of gas that's coming off that anaerobic system. So you get uh, improved heating uh, or electricity generation, which means that you don't need to use as much, uh, much electricity or gas on the, uh, um, on, the, on the treatment plant, so it reduces costs. Instead of going through the, uh, the, the technical details about how it works, I thought I might just share with you a couple of uh, case studies to be able to demonstrate uh, how it's been applied by water authorities around Australia. Um, the first case study I wanted to show you was around uh, around th this. Uh, it was a pump station, a 15 kilometre rising main um, in eastern Victoria. Uh, so 15 kilometres, 48 hour residence time. That, that's, it was pretty septic coming out the back of the uh, at, at the back of the pipe. Horrible, horrible stuff. So it was just black coloured coming out the back. It was currently being treated by uh, a, a ferric chloride. Um, we came in and we, uh, we replaced uh, that existing chemical arrangement. Um, what was happening is that the, uh, you can kind of see, so I'll use my mouse here, so to, to point out where, so you, you can kind of see around around here on the discharge manholes, um, the, the acid that was coming out due to the hydrogen sulfide creating sulfuric acid but also just with the addition of the ferric chloride 
um, it was it was chewing out the uh, the manholes on the discharge side because because of that that acid attack. Um, the the ActiMag product is not acidic. Uh, it's quite the opposite. In fact, it uh, it protects uh, the assets. So this was the uh, the pump station here. Um, it was quite a simple solution. We put a uh, we put a little dosing unit in there, three three hundred uh, three hundred litre dosing unit uh, that lasted for about a month. Uh, it replaced a ferric chloride tank, which, which was about a 10,000 litre tank. Um, so it was, it was rather interesting in terms of, uh, in terms of seeing the, um, yeah, seeing the, uh, the, the difference in terms of chemical consumption there. Um, we just, you just run a, uh, a hose from that dosing unit into the, into the wet well. Um, and it just, it just drips into the wet well every time the, uh, the pump starts and stops. Very simple setup. Um, and the, the outcome of that was, uh, you can see along the, uh, the, top, the top line here, that was our control. So that was, that was before we added our product and it was while they were using the, uh, the ferric chloride. So as you can see, the, the, uh, the spikes, of the hydrogen sulfide coming out the discharge pipe were, were up at 100 parts per million. So very high, um, which was causing odour complaints downstream. Um, and the more they added to the ferric chloride, uh, it wasn't getting any better. Uh, ferric chloride's got this this problem where um, it's quite efficient at uh, um, at a high pH, but because it's acidic, it keeps pushing the pH lower, which means that the more you add, the less efficient it becomes. Um, we came in and we dropped our uh, our product in and, and took the ferric chloride out, and it, uh, that's what you see along the bottom here. It essentially dropped from spiking up to 100 parts per million to straight down to zero. Um, so uh, it's a very effective solution, um, and it can reduce your costs in terms of if you've, if you've got a, an odour control system or a chemical dosing system there already. Uh, another case study that I'd, I'd like to share with you is uh, around uh, our replacement of calcium nitrate. So calcium nitrate uh, is another another method that, that some people use for, for odour control on these systems. Um, again, we, we came in and we dropped in a, uh, a temporary unit. Um, just to do the the testing on the on the network, uh, which we can we can do for anyone. We've got these these temporary dosing units uh, that we can deploy very quickly to to, uh, to test things out on on, on your network. Uh, the result of that, so you can see in this uh, this yellow yellow section across here, was uh, in normal operation for the for the for the council. Uh, this is in in southern around the southern New South Wales region. Um, so as you can see, the uh, the, the under normal operation, the calcium nitrate was was spiking up to around 50 ppm, sometimes up to 100 ppm, um, uh, and that was that was you know working reasonably well. Uh, we turned the uh, the system off, and as you can see, the, uh, the 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 baseline data when there was no dosing at all was was incredibly high, so up to 350 parts per million. Obviously, that's unacceptable because number one, it's dangerous for the people who are working on the uh, sewer network, but also uh, it, it, it just creates a whole heap of odor complaints, you know, for the people who are who live along the uh, the, the sewer network uh, on the way to the next pump station. But but also um, that the the discharge pump station was actually located inside the depot of the uh, the council yard, so the workers there. It was just horrendous for them with the amount of hydrogen sulfide that was coming out of the uh, out of the wet well there. So, uh, what did we do? We came in and we did a uh, we did a, a, a trial at uh, at this site with uh, with the ActiBag, uh, and as you can see, it, it dropped down. So the baseline is incredibly low, below 10 parts per million. We did have a couple of spikes, uh, which was up to well around 50 to 75 parts per million, but uh, it was it was uh, very effective in terms of uh, the results we had. At, uh, at at that pump station, so a couple of examples of uh, of, of uh, ActiMag working very well in terms of the, the controlling of the odors there. Just wouldn't mind uh, just for a second to ask you to submit some questions. So I'm not sure. I'll just flick over and see if there's much interaction going on at the moment. Um, we've got a few comments there, but uh, look, if any if any of this is uh, resonating with you. Um, if you've got some examples of, of, of systems or some questions around uh, the the odor control systems um, or how it works, please take take the time to to, uh, to add some comments or questions on the side there, and I'll I'll get back to them at the uh, at the end of the presentation, um, and hopefully we can uh, 
we can answer some of the questions. But I'd, I'd love to hear uh, about your your experiences within uh, within the wastewater networks that, that you manage. Uh, without further ado, I'll get back to the uh, presentation. Um, well, that, that covers the uh, the basics in terms of uh, in terms of how it works. But what about the side benefits? You know, side benefits that are not normally uh, not normally accounted for in, in terms of their uh, in terms of their payback and that type of thing. Whether you're assessing it for uh, for whether it's cost effective, but um, in these times, it's probably worth thinking about how how the the, the decisions that you're making. So I got a light flickering there, but that's all right. Um, hopefully, it's not too distracting. Um, yeah, so it's worth taking a, a little bit of time to think about uh, what the decisions that you're making within your network is going to affect other parts of the business. So whether it's um, procurement, uh, they're always looking to reduce costs. Um, whether it's making life easier for the uh, for the treatment plant downstream, um, so chemical reduction or um, they can potentially eliminate some hazardous chemicals that they use on site at treatment plants. So uh, I wanted to have a quick chat about the uh, the additional benefits because uh, they might really help out uh, your colleagues um, around the uh, the water authority or council that you're working at. So uh, within wastewater treatment plants, uh, there's an additional benefit in terms of uh, pH and alkalinity um, management at the treatment plant. So. As you can see, the uh, along this graph here, um, the uh, with a with a fixed addition of uh, of uh, chemical in order to uh, in order to hit a pH up at around eight and a half, uh, you can see that that through the uh, the water treatment process, um, the the pH drops away. That's due to when the uh, organics within the wastewater are consumed, it uh, it, it generates um, uh, volatile fatty acids, uh, which are acidic, so that consumes the the alkali. So uh, it's really important that uh, within within the wastewater treatment plants that uh, that you use a, a an alkali or a pH control mechanism that's got a quite quite a high alkalinity, and uh, an ActiMag has, uh, has has one of the highest alkalinities on the market. It's very good at stabilising uh, wastewater treatment uh, systems. So as you can see here, it's a comparison of a few different products like caustic, lime, uh, and also no addition um, in terms of the pH control. So as you can see, uh, you know the, the the range where you want to keep stuff is somewhere between seven and nine. Um, over time, over over the these few hours, you can see that the ActiMag manages to maintain the alkalinity within the treatment plant, whereas a lot of other additives like lime or caustic or, or even um, uh, soda ash, uh, bicarb soda, those type of things, uh, they've got a, quite a low low alkalinity. So over time through through the treatment plant, uh, that, that, that it loses the alkalinity um, and your pH starts to fall. Uh, so that, that's quite important. So that, that's a benefit that you might be able to provide uh, your wastewater treatment plant by, by adding the, uh, the, the ActiMag upstream in your sewer network. In terms of chemical consumption um, for pH control and alkalinity, uh, as you can see, ActiMag um, is, is quite low compared to, to other, other chemicals. So say if you're using, uh, say, caustic, 50% caustic, this, uh, this red bar here um, for, for uh, control of pH within your wastewater treatment system, uh, you, can, you can reduce your, your chemical usage by about 40% just by switching over to ActiMag. Uh, it's a very simple, very simple solution, and it's uh, it's much safer than these other chemicals as well. So um, you can actually you can actually drink Actimag. I wouldn't wouldn't advise it because it tastes terrible, but um, yeah, it's very similar to things like my Lanta. So the alkalines that uh, help you settle your stomach after you've had a massive meal. <laughs> um, also, uh, it, it it's very cost competitive with uh, things like lime and soda ash. Um, there, there's Lots of different solutions out there for for pH control, but uh, yeah, in terms of uh, in terms of cost control, um, your your procurement department will be very happy with you if if uh, if you can reduce these uh, either reduce these these other other things that are used for pH control within the treatment plant um, by either using this using the ActiMag at the treatment plant or you can put it upstream in the uh, sewer network. And it, it, it lasts all the way through the network until it gets to the treatment plant. So you can reduce your chemical consumption there. 
One of the other benefits that I, I did mention before was around phosphate control. Um, so phosphate uh, is, um, is is often a bit of a problem if you, as I, as I said, discharging into uh, into waterways that that phosphate is a is a bit of a challenge. Um, so ActiMag, uh, being a really high surface area product, uh, it's it's got um, uh, the particles are, are really porous, a bit like popcorn. Um, the phosphate actually forms a, a crystal inside the particle, and what happens is when it gets to the treatment plant, it discharges with the sludge instead of going out with the with the liquid. Um, that way, you, you, we see uh, um, a reduction in the phosphate going out with the uh, with the liquid, so and it's it's very predictable as well. So you can kind of see here that the uh, the addition of uh, of ActiMag is is incredibly controlled. Um, so if you need a phosphate level, say uh, you know below uh, 10 milligram per liter of, of, of phosphate, we know exactly how much um, uh, ActiMag we need to add to the treatment plant in order to achieve that. It's it's very predictable. Um, this testing was done on an abattoir in, uh, up in Tongala, so they've got a, uh, an anaerobic system there, which was uh, able to com we were able to completely remove the phosphate more or less uh, in the laboratory testing there, which was, was quite a success. Uh, another another example of phosphate, another case study we've done with uh, with phosphate reduction was a, a food manufacturing plant in um, Ballarat. Uh, so this one was a, a quite a large anaerobic system, um, and uh, they had some. They had problems with uh, a struvite scale on the discharge uh, within the discharge pipework of their um, uh, their their anaerobic pond. So we came in with the with the ActiMag. Uh, we did some testing and we tested the the ActiMag against the ferric chloride uh, for the for the capture of that phosphate and and the amount of ActiMag that we needed to use compared to uh, the ferric chloride and other 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 uh, solutions for that phosphate removal was was much lower. So as you can see here, so it's kind of nine times lower. Um, just quickly talking about COD and boosting biogas and BOD. So uh, it, it does work um, as a uh, it, it, the ActiMag being uh, that high surface area magnesium hydroxide. It works to boost the amount of biogas that's coming out of anaerobic digesters. Um, it does that. Uh, by two mechanisms. Number one is around the just the bulk pH and alkalinity control. Uh, being a magnesium hydroxide, it is naturally alkali, um, so it will it will improve and stabilise just the bulk pH. But but also due to the fact that it's got that high surface area, it's able to boost the uh, the, the bacteria uh, that produce the uh, the, the methane uh, within the anaerobic system. Uh, and that that's going to result in uh, in more biogas coming off the uh, any any system that you've got uh, a collection system on, which again it assists in terms of boosting energy output. So you can you can see here that uh, we we added we had a we ran a baseline uh, study. This was at a uh, a piggery in Ballarat. Um, they had a uh, a floating head uh, anaerobic digester that collected the gas. Uh, and then that gas was used for, for electricity generation. So um, we had a baseline and we, we did a trial uh, the, the following year. Uh, and as you can see, significant amount of a significant boost in, in the amount of biogas that was produced, somewhere between 25 and 30 percent. And you can see the, the, there's an equivalent reduction in BOD and COD coming out the back end because all of that, all of that organics that normally would have gone out with the effluent, is, is converted into uh, into useful biogas, which which is great for uh, heating the pond, um, but also uh, for electricity generation. Uh, during this trial at the the piggery, um, we did uh, we did some samples. We did uh, which was we compared uh, a number of different alkalis to make sure that uh, the reason that we were getting these results was because of the of our product. So we didn't want to just assume that. Um, that it was it was our product, so we, we tried it. We tried a control, which was essentially no additive. We we compared that against hydrated lime powder, caustic soda, and and uh, a commodity grade magnesium hydroxide, which is just available on the market, um, just known as MHL or, or magnesium hydroxide. Uh, and as you can see, the 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 action of ActiMag is significantly higher than than all of these other standard kind of commodity alkali materials. The reason for that is that that really high surface area, and the, the porous particle. You know, a bit like bit like popcorn. You know, you've got all these these uh, pores inside the particle. 
So for the same alkalinity dose, uh, you can see a, a significant increase in the benefit that you get from, uh, from, from adding that. Uh, just quickly having a chat about uh, how do you, like, you, there's all these, all these benefits, but how do you actually apply it within, your, within a wastewater network? Um, so Calix has a, a, a very sophisticated engineering department uh, up, in, up in our Sydney office at, at, at Pimble. Um, we can custom design um, units for, for your application, whether that's uh, needing to do something that's below ground in a, in a pit or whether it's above ground on the side of the road and it needs to look pretty. Uh, we provide all kinds of uh, solutions in terms of uh, arrangements for, so flexible arrangements for purchase and rental as well. So if, you can't, if, if your water authority or council can't afford the, uh, the, the, the capex, uh, we can build that into OPEX budget or vice versa. Uh, we're very flexible in terms of how how we uh, we get paid for these things, but we, we design custom units. But also we've got um, we've got package units as well that are just standing by, ready to go. So if if it, if you just need a, a standard one that's you know a uh, a one one thousand or fifteen hundred liter tank uh, conical tank. We can provide those units that have got the pumps on the bottom and everything ready to go. So essentially, we just drop it in place. Um, we we hook it up to the electrical system, and and you're off and running. Uh, we 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 also provide temporary rental units as well. So if you wanted to try out the uh, the product within your network without without any long term commitments um, with with capex or you know long term rental, we we can certainly facilitate that and uh, and try it out within your network. Um, say if you've got a particularly nasty uh, uh, side stream, whether it's a small pump station that's coming in that takes a long time because the, the residence time along it is, uh, is quite long, or whether it's just it's coming from a, like it could be a food manufacturing plant that's putting out some, some fairly rough, uh, rough stuff in terms of the trade waste discharge. Uh, we, we, can, uh, we can certainly drop in units and, and, and try out uh, the, this solution to make sure that it works before any kind of large commitments put in place. Calix also provides, uh, we've got a, uh, a service and maintenance um, provision. So uh, if, if say, uh, your operators don't want to get involved in the, uh, the, the routine maintenance of these uh, units, um, our, our transportation guys are all trained in how to, uh, um, how to service and, and, and monitor these systems. So every time they deliver, uh, what they can do is if, if we've got the service agreement in place, uh, we, can, we can check out all the pumps and make sure they're all working. We can do the annual annual servicing on on the uh, on the pumps that are required, and and even you know the clean out of tanks um, um, every every year or two, uh, if if we need to. Uh, Calix is a uh, so we're we're certified with uh, safety certified and we're quality certified through uh, BSI to the uh, the ISO nine thousand and one quality management standard. Um, but also the the the, uh, the Australian standard 4801 in terms of safety. Um, so you can be assured that the, the product that you're receiving um, is is going to be on spec every time. It's going to be effective in, within your network. But also the guys who are delivering the product, the guys who are making the product, um, and and anyone that's doing any servicing on your site or doing work on your site um, is, is fully trained in terms of the safety standards up, up to the Australian standards to make sure that, uh, that you've got assurance that, uh, that you're not going to get any safety incidents. Um, all of our stuff is based, all of our products are based on uh, non-hazardous materials, um, so non-toxic, non-hazardous. Uh, so th the risk is really low um, if, uh, you know, in the event of like a chemical spill or something like that, uh, the impact to the environment is, is more or less negligible. Um, and also if people get the, the, the Actimag on them, um, it's not a problem at all. Um, so uh, there's, there's no, it's not corrosive, it's not toxic, none of that. So all of our products are based on those, on, uh, on those premises. Um, and also it, it's done through the a carbon negative technology. So it's all, it's all produced uh, through uh, our catalytic flash calciner or CFC, a, a Calix flash calciner. Um, and that, that is a technology that's designed to be able to capture carbon dioxide. So it's really environmentally friendly as well. Um, I'll just grab a, a quick drink. I'm getting a bit thirsty here. Um, Calix also uh, is, is very aware at the moment that 
security of supply is uh, is a, a bit of a concern. So with the um, with this uh, the virus that, that's that's going around, um, we're, we're very aware that the the economy is kind of fluctuating around, and uh, people are getting a bit worried about what the uh, the exchange rate's going to have, what effect the exchange rate is going to have on their their product supply. Um, the reason we need we we've got a very secure supply is that we own our own mine site. So over in South Australia, around Lee Creek, about four hour drive north of Adelaide. We've got a magnesite mine, um, and we we mine our own material, uh, and that's used. That's brought to Victoria, converted into a uh, into a magnesium oxide through through this uh, the CFC or calciner, um, and then it's distributed through. Um, it's it's hydrated and distributed through our networks that that we fully control. So we've got full control. We've got vertical integration or full control over our um, our entire supply network or supply chain, um, as well as distribution chain. So in terms of worrying about security of supply, Calix is able to give that, that assurance that we've got an incredible, we've paid attention to that supply chain um, and we, we're we not going to be affected uh, by variations in foreign exchange rate. All right, um, I might just quickly uh, flick over and have a look at some of uh, the comments that have been coming in. Sorry, this will only just take a second. There's a, a few a few questions coming in here. So, uh, John John Harrell, Nitten is the best. I, I have to agree with you there. Nitten is a, an amazing business development manager. Uh, Nitten's based over in the, uh, the the United States now, so he's working uh, uh, on our expansion project over in uh, California, uh, also around the uh, the western. The western seaboard of the United States, so we've got um, uh, yeah quite a quite a big network starting up there. But yes, Nitten is 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 very good. <laughs> um, okay, so what was your time range on the first chart? Uh, let's let's just flick back to that. So so which first chart are you talking about here? So. That one there, uh, yeah, it's a bit hard to see. So this this is over a couple of weeks. So each one of these, uh, so it, oh, actually this one was over a week. So each one of these uh, gaps is 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 twelve hours. So um, I hope that answers that question. Um, but th this was maintained for quite a long time. Uh, the the reason I've only displayed a week is uh, is because it's easier to see. Um, we did see after about three weeks there was a power failure there, and we saw the uh, the the odor, the hydrogen sulfide pop back up again, um, uh, and then we turned the system back on and it, it came back down. So um, uh, yeah, it's, it's able to maintain it on an ongoing basis. Okay, let's uh, just look back to the uh, the chats here. Um, uh, Mr. Start, sorry, is a liquid or pellet? So. Uh, Actimag is a uh, is a slurry. It's, it comes as a liquid, but it's a, it's sixty percent solids of a, a high surface area magnesium hydroxide um, suspended in water. Uh, so it does come as a liquid. It's stored in a conical tank, um, discharged from the conical tank through a peristaltic pump, and that just pumps into pump. There's no dilution necessary. It just pumps directly into the uh, the 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 pump station. Um, and it's it's quite a simple simple uh, simple addition. Every time the pump station is, is pumped out, you just add uh, the required dosage rate of the the liquid Actimag into into the uh, into the system. Um, okay, what other questions have we got here, Michael? Uh, your system's able to be set up at pump stations. Uh, are there smaller systems available to use at the top of gravity mains or uh, reticulation systems? What's the smallest unit available? So, the smallest unit we've got available is a 300 litre system. Um, that's able to treat. Uh, it's able to essentially go down to uh, to any any rate. Like they're able to turn down to any rate you need. So, we did see a picture before um, with the, uh, the with the one of the smallest units we supply. Um, I'll just flick back so you can uh, so you can see that. So here's a picture. On the side here of the the smallest unit, so it's a, this one's a temporary unit. So uh, this one, you it, 
you wouldn't normally just set it up like, like if it was a permanent setup it would be uh, all enclosed in a, in a in a nice box but um, because this was a temporary unit um, it's just a we just dropped in a 300 litre conical tank as well as a peristaltic pump um, and that was able to dump uh, drop into the uh, into the wet well um, now the uh, in terms of the question around reticulation networks uh, so it is at the moment we we only do um, yeah we, we, we only do uh, solutions around uh, around pump stations uh, the reticulation network question we're working on a solution there but we haven't come up with uh, with a solution at the moment that can be dropped into reticulation networks or gravity mains easily uh, however if you do have like a really small pump station that is pumping into that gravity main um, we can go into that that upstream pump station or, or a pump station on one of those branches um, so I hope that answers that question um, I'd hesitate I'd hesitate to say we can't address it though so it's probably worth um, it, sorry this lot is probably becoming very distracting <laughs> um, if uh, I'd hesitate yeah I'd hesitate to say we can't solve the problem so what I'd suggest is, is uh, we'll, we'll probably get we'll get in contact with you and we'll have a chat with you about the specific situation and see if there's a way that we can actually drop the uh, drop the ActiMag into that into that main. Um, we're, we're coming up with with new solutions all the time. We're fairly innovative um, in in terms of solving those problems. Uh, so yeah, we'll get we'll definitely get in touch and uh, and find a way we can help you out there. Um, how do you compare uh, dosing against iron chloride or ferric chloride or calcium nitrate? Because uh, uh, you are comparing to other alkalis here. So uh, in terms of odour control, um, it's very effective against uh, compared to iron chloride or calcium nitrate. So uh, it's, a, it's an alkali, um, which means that the, the, it, it becomes more efficient um, the more you add of it. Uh, whereas, say, an iron chloride... Um, the, the way it the way it forms is it, it creates those uh, the the iron salts and unfortunately it becomes uh, less efficient the more you add of it. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with this light. It's it's flashing, <laughs> and I'm sure that's quite distracting. I'll just be uh, I'll just be back in one second. Calyx was founded in 2005 by myself and a Queenslander named Colin Hawley. He had a great idea for a new type of kiln or furnace. As Connor and I developed the idea, it became apparent that the technology had the potential to be applied to many industries and could help address some of the world's most pressing problems. We raised some money, did some small scale. Apologies about that. Okay, sorry. So back to the uh, back to the question. So. Around uh, iron chloride and uh, calcium nitrate, um, so the, uh, the the as I said in the um, with this case study that we had uh, at, at Eastern Victoria, uh, this was actually with ferric chloride addition. So it had got to the point where they wanted to. So ferric chloride can eliminate it, uh, the the odor down to you know depending on the system it, it can. It can limit. It can bring it down to like a hundred parts per million, but if you keep adding it, it becomes less and less efficient. So you end up in this situation where you, you add more and it becomes less efficient, and then your odor goes up. Um, the the ActiMag product is designed to do the complete opposite. So the more you add of it, the more efficient it becomes, uh, just through the bulk adjustment of that the pH within the network, uh, and that way uh, you're able to use significantly less of it in order to get the same result. Um, if you've got a specific situation that you're looking at, um, I would love to have a chat with you. Uh, because all sewer networks are a little bit different. Uh, and I don't want to assume that uh, what is going to work for, for somebody else is, is, is going to work for, for you. So probably the best way to go about it would be to, uh, if you've got a, a system that's got ferric chloride or calcium nitrate on on the dosing unit uh, we can we can help you out and drop in a, uh, a trial unit there and you can actually see the difference for yourself um, you'll find that over the long term the price is much lower and you get a better result in terms of odor control 
another question from from Eric. Uh, has ActiMag ever been used in reverse osmosis water plant to replace lime for alkalinity control? That is a really interesting question. The answer is no, but we would be very interested in giving it a try. That sounds like a really interesting uh, interesting solution. Um, yeah, look, I, I, it does have a very low solubility, uh, magnesium hydroxide. That's, that's one of the ways it's able to maintain its high alkalinity over time. Uh, because it stays as a, as a solid when it's traveling within the wastewater. Um, that, I'm not sure whether that would have um, yeah, potential negative consequences on, on uh, the reverse osmosis membranes that they use, but you know, <laughs> if lime's used in there, um, it might be worth uh, uh, having a look at the, the options we've got there. So look, Eric, I might get in touch. Uh, I'm not sure whether you're involved in reverse osmosis, but uh, yeah, I'm, look, I'm, I will get in touch and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to look into that. That sounds interesting. Uh, do you have approximate trial costs, uh, Rodrigo? Uh, yes, so um, it depends on the size of the unit. Uh, so if you've roughly, we use somewhere between 75 and 150 kilograms per megalitre of, uh, of product. That depends on the severity of how septic the system is, uh, how bad the, the odour coming out the back is. So there's a couple of variables there, but look, if we if we base it on um, 100 kilograms per megalitre, say if you've got a 1.5 uh, uh, megalitre pump station, megalitres per week pump station, so uh, that would, would be yeah, somewhere around the... the Fifteen hundred to four thousand dollar mark for 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 a month trial. Um, that's with uh, we can provide a, a dosing unit in there for free for a month just to uh, just to see how it goes. Um, that way, there's there's very little risk in terms of trying it out. So um, yeah, so it it scales up. Obviously, if you've got a much bigger pump station, the, the costs are going to be higher in terms of the product. But um, yeah, for smaller pump stations. It's only a few thousand dollars to, to get started and try it out on your network. Uh, is that, I'm not sure whether it's Jan or Jan. Uh, good morning. Can you elaborate on um, on the working dosage of ActiMag and the time intervals done uh, to completely lower phosphate? Um, yes. So um, the the working dosage, as I said, it's it's uh, for odor control. Uh, somewhere between 75 and 150 uh, kilograms per megalitre. Uh, for phosphate control within, uh, say, wastewater treatment plants, it might, it might be higher than that. So, uh, say, if you're wanting to completely eliminate phosphate that was, uh, say, at 50 milligram per litre, we might end up having to add 300 milligram per litre of, uh, of, of the ActiMag in order to completely eliminate that. Um, However, it does depend on, there's a few variables there in terms of uh, the pH of the system. So if you've got a very low pH system, that, that's why you might use 300 kilograms per megalitre. Um, it's because a lot of the, the alkali, the, the ActiMag, would be consumed through adjusting the pH, whereas uh, what you want is you want that capture of the phosphate within the treatment plant. So there's uh, probably the best way to do it would be for us to come out and do a, a, a lab test. We can do that in a in a, a beaker just on your on your site. Uh, we we take some of the wastewater, we add the ActiMag, and we we actually see how much of a dosage of the ActiMag you need in order to capture all of that phosphate. So we can certainly facilitate a laboratory test, like a lab test, on your site um, in order to in order to see how much how much we would need to consume to uh, to get rid of that uh, phosphate. Um, and what is the process to request a product sample here in Mexico? Um, we do have a, we've got a distribution network in California, which probably would be your closest. Um, the best way would be just to jump on our website. So the link is, is, is down below here. Um, it's uh, www.calex.global. Um, give us a, shoot us an email, go on the contact us page and, and shoot us an email. We'll definitely get... Um, any inquiries over to our Californian um, uh, colleagues over there? So that's 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 Nitin over in the US. That's uh, uh, the person that, that that John before was saying uh, is a, is a brilliant business development manager, and yes, he's very positive. So um, we can certainly facilitate Nitin getting you a uh, a sample there in Mexico. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, jump on our website. Um, link link is below. 
and uh, and we'll we'll get in touch with a uh, a sample. Uh, Richard, hi Richard. Um, how does ActiMag compare with uh, O2 for odor control? Uh, so I've seen examples uh, of that here in Victoria, just up the road from uh, from where I am at the moment. Uh, so they were using uh, O2 or ozone. Um, they tried out a couple of things. Uh, the result that they were having was uh, uh, not great. So the, the 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 extra oxygen was causing uh, additional growth of uh, fungus and bacteria on the walls of the pump station. Uh, caused discoloration, but also it's not great for people who are working in there with all the fungal spores. Uh, so um, they decided to to not not use those systems plus uh ozone or ozone specifically is 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 quite dangerous in terms of um people working in there so if uh when, when they had the system turned on they, they were having to um 24 hours before they wanted to work on the pump station they ended up having to open the pump station up completely for 24 hours and you know that that can be quite dangerous if it's in a in a public place um and, and vent the system for 24 hours before they before they started doing work on there, like hosing out or cleaning it or doing maintenance on pumps. So in terms of the safety side of aspect, when you're comparing, say, uh, an ActiMag against uh, ozone or oxygen, uh, there's the safety benefit. Um, in, 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 terms of, uh, in terms of cost effectiveness, um, I'm not entirely familiar with the, uh, with the O2 costs for, for odor control, but... Certainly, um, we've, we've never come across a situation where people have chosen uh, ozone or oxygen uh, instead of the ActiMag. But um, look, if you've, got a, if you've got a system, Richard, if you've got a system that has uh, ozone or oxygen in it, um, we'd be very interested in, in coming in and maybe doing a trial there to see, uh, to actually directly compare one against the other. Um, so if you've, if you've got a system there, that'd be great. Uh, otherwise, if you're asking about um, like a new system that you're setting up, uh, let's let's get together and have a chat about the uh, the total costs there. So that would be uh, that would be great. Okay, um, that is the end of the questions. Uh, so if um, I suppose if there's if there's any more questions, pop them in now. But uh, otherwise, uh, look, thank you very much for for coming along to the webinar. I hope it's been informative. Uh, hopefully, it'll contribute a little bit to your uh, your professional development and uh, and and hopefully got rid of a bit of boredom uh, during these times where there's people are stuck at home. Uh, one thing I wanted to uh, highlight is that uh, coming up, we've got a few more. So we plan to do these webinars weekly. Um, next week, I'm going to be having a chat about uh, specifically around that phosphate removal in wastewater and how the uh, the magnesium hydroxide or ActiMag product um, is able to capture that phosphate in in that high surface area particle, uh, and also the benefits um, com comparing uh, that against other other methods of uh, of phosphate capture within wastewater networks. In two weeks' time, we've got a we've got a special guest. Uh, so Doug Kelly, um, who is the uh, the managing director of IER over in the United States, he's uh, one of the, the world's experts on, uh, on odour control and chemical addition for odour control, um, but also for pH and alkalinity. He's, uh, he's a PhD chemist, um, and I'm going to do an interview with him, uh, which is hopefully going to be really informative in terms of the, uh, the theoretical side of how these products work. So um, we've got some uh, fantastic webinars coming up, and I'd just encourage you to... Uh, to subscribe via our website so that you get notifications about the uh, the, the upcoming webinars and and how it's all going to work. Um, also, we're we're always looking for 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 new new things to do webinars about. So it's a fairly new process for us, um, and we would love to uh, if you've got any ideas um, or, or suggestions, or maybe you want to do a uh, a Skype call with us to that can be recorded and and put out as a webinar about some, something interesting that's going on in your network. We're, we're really interested to, uh, to hear any suggestions that you've got and facilitate um, uh, yeah, any, any ideas that you've got to, to be able to put that out there. So hopefully these webinars are going to be great for you um, and I hope you've enjoyed this one. So thank you very much. Um, please take the time to jump on our website and put in any inquiries. I'll just quickly check the... Uh, 
the uh, the comments and that. So happy to address this with Michael. Yep, okay, so we've got a bit of comments there. But look, thank you for, for joining us today. I really appreciate you uh, you you coming along and uh, hopefully it's been of value to you. So please get in touch and thank you very much. Calyx was founded in 2005 by myself and a Queenslander named Colin Hawley. He had a great idea for a new type of kiln or furnace. As Connor and I developed the idea, it became apparent that the technology had the potential to be applied to many industries and could help address some of the world's most pressing problems. We raised some money, did some small scale testing and gave some great results, encouraged us to build a commercial scale facility at Bacchus Marsh in Victoria. The calyx flash calciner, or CFC process, involves grinding minerals or other feedstocks to between one hundredth and one thousandth of a millimetre in size, then flash heating them in an externally heated reactor in a very short time, up to about 950 degrees centigrade. As trapped gases in the material bubble out through the particles, they create highly porous structures. These particles are then cooled very quickly leaving a very porous, honeycomb-like structure. New materials produced by the CFC are proven to have similar reactive properties to nanoparticles, without the safety concerns and high costs, but with all the benefits that nanotechnology is developing into numerous products, applications and markets. I joined Calyx in 2013 because I could sense the huge potential of this technology. Uh, it's a platform technology that has two sides, production of nanoactive materials on the one hand, and the potential to be applied in CO2 capture on the other. Our first commercial product was released in 2013 for wastewater treatment, followed closely by two more products in 2014, one for infrastructure protection and a specialty chemical additive. All these products are now in export. In addition to our commercial products, we also have some pre-commercial products already in paid trials in Asia and Europe that look really exciting. One's a water conditioner to help with uh, yields and environmental problems in aquaculture. And the others are non-toxic, environmentally friendly, broad spectrum crop protection products. We also have a rich research and development pipeline with some really exciting developments in advanced batteries as well as CO2 capture for the lime and cement industries. Additionally, if the materials have trapped CO2, the technology can separate that CO2 directly for no additional energy penalty. For example, limestone by weight is approximately 50% CO2, which is released as a gas when making lime and is therefore why the cement and lime industries are very CO2 intensive. Application of the technology in CO2 mitigation is thus of interest to those industries. And we're piloting these programs uh, with over 25 million in funding from Australian and European governments. And we are working with some of the world's largest companies in these areas. Having proven its commercial products and business models, Calyx is about to embark on some serious market entries into the US, Europe and Asia to grow its revenues and margins. We will also continue to develop our pre-commercial products into fully-fledged commercial products and processes through both direct and distribution sales and licensing strategies. And lastly, we'll continue to develop the multitude of high potential R&D applications into some of the world's fastest growing industries. Calyx really is all about creating new materials and processes to solve global challenges. Calyx was founded in 2005 by myself and a Queenslander named Colin Hawley. He had a great idea for a new type of kiln or furnace. As Connor and I developed the idea, it became apparent that the technology had the potential to be applied to many industries and could help address some of the world's most pressing problems. We raised some money, did some small scale testing and gave some great results, encouraged us to build a commercial scale facility at Bacchus Marsh in Victoria. The calyx flash calciner, or CFC process, involves grinding minerals or other feedstocks to between one hundredth and one thousandth of a millimetre in size, then flash heating them in an externally heated reactor 
in a very short time, up to about 950 degrees centigrade. 